Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have a book subscription to share with you that was not sent to me for review. I am actually a subscriber of Once Upon a Book Club. And for the month of March, the box was actually a very large version because of the contents inside. This is one of those book subscriptions where along with the book for the month, you also receive some gifts that have been curated to go along with certain pages in the novel. So I always think that's really, really fun because Once Upon a Book Club has been around for a while and they are a large subscription company in terms of the number of subscribers. They are able to actually have things made for the boxes, sometimes I think to better effect than others, but uh, they are right on time with their boxes. If that is something that is super important to you, if you're really on time with reading all of your book boxes as they arrive, but let me give you a few more details. So it is $49.99 per month. There is a little savings if you're able to do a multi-month subscription. I personally will do a three-month subscription knowing that it is pretty easy if you want to skip a month. Sometimes the hints for the upcoming months. I know that it's a genre that's not really my taste. For example, romances are just not usually my thing. I'll read a couple of them in the summer months, but usually I prefer historical fiction and contemporary fiction and thrillers, but they've always got really good and often very current, very recent releases. So you can usually, if you're in the book world, in the know, uh, kind of guess what the upcoming title is and if it's something that you already have or that you want to read or that you want to read in conjunction with a subscription box. Now, now I do have a referral code and that referral code is really helpful to me because then I get some credits so I can continue reviewing the box here on the channel. So if you use the link that I'll leave for you in the description box below and in the pinned first comment along with the code NOEL10, you will save 10% on your purchase. All right, so along with the book, which for the month of March was Sisters of Fortune by Anna Lee Huber. And uh, this was a beautiful edition. You also get a little bookmark. Uh, you also get their little guide. Now each box, because they don't tell you the title, it's a little bit of a surprise if you can't suss it out from the hint, uh, has just a theme. So this was Ship of Dreams. What's really nice is they usually have an interview with the author. Again, that is something that they're able to do because of the size of this book subscription. They do have a book club online through Facebook where there are discussion questions and they do have this little corner here that tells you the numbers of the pages where gifts are associated so you can just do a quick check of your box to make sure that you have all of the items and then the usual back page has some other sort of um something else to sort of uh highlight the topic or the subject or the time period of the book so in this case we just have a crossword puzzle uh that is all kind of titanic themed because of course this was a historical fiction novel that uh takes place on the Titanic based on a real family that was on the Titanic, which I found really interesting. I'm not necessarily like a, I'm not sure what the word is, but like a Titanic file, but uh, I definitely, we all know the classic movie and I, I definitely love all the documentaries and everything. And I'm very interested in the Titanic 2 that's being built. Now, along with the book, as well as the guide, we sometimes get some other enhancers, like for example, this signed book plate from the author, of course, made to match the book itself, which is beautiful. We also get our quote card, because she's too remarkable not to be told every day how extraordinary she is, which very much matches the style of the book jacket. You can kind of see they're very similar quotes but different. And then on the back of this one we actually have a letter from the author. Now sometimes these very closely um, echo the sort of synopsis or they echo what the author has already written in a note in the book, but in this case it was a little bit different. So if we have time after we go through the blurb and the passages that are associated with gifts, I will definitely share with you some of that if not all because I found it really really interesting. So taking a closer look at this gorgeous edition, we did get a hardcover. We don't always get a hardcover from Once Upon a Book Club, but in this case we did. Look how pretty the page edges are. And then inside we have this lovely liner. And then I always like to take a look at the actual book. It's this gorgeous coral color with this silver engraving on it. So really, really pretty. Definitely very Once Upon a Book Club looking in terms of the publishing style to go along with it. Um, I looked and I saw that it was published by a certain, it didn't say anything in the notes about it being in conjunction with Once Upon a Book Club, but it's by Kensington Publishing Corp. So um, it is a new book 
published in 2024. I just think it's really pretty. So it's a little flowery, but you know, it goes with the uh, subject matter. Let me go ahead and read the sort of synopsis or teaser for you. April 1912. Now I will say I am about to go on a cruise, so I felt like this was a little bit ominous in all honesty. It says, it's the perfect finale to a grand tour of Europe, sailing home on the largest, most luxurious ocean liner ever built. For the Fortune Sisters, the voyage offers a chance to reflect on the treasures of the past they've seen. Magnificent castles and museums in Italy and France, the ruins of Greece and the Middle East, and to contemplate the futures that await them. For Alice, there's foreboding mixed with her excitement. A fortune teller in Egypt gave her a dire warning about traveling at sea, and the freedom she's enjoyed on her travels contrasts with her fiancé's plans for her return, a cosseted existence she's no longer sure she wants. Flora is also returning to a fiancé, a well-to-do banker of whom her parents heartily approve, as befits their most dutiful daughter. Yet the closer the wedding looms, the less sure Flora feels. Another man, charming, exasperating, completely unsuitable, occupies her thoughts, daring her to follow her own desires rather than settling for the wishes of others. Youngest sister Mabel knows her parents arranged this grand tour to separate her from a jazz musician, but the secret truth is that Mabel has little interest in marrying at all, preferring to explore ideas of suffrage and reform, even if it forces a rift with her family. Each sister grapples with the choices before her as the grand vessel glides through the Atlantic waters, until on an infamous night, faint Fate intervenes, forever altering their lives. So it was a great story, and there is a note in the back of the book that talks about how much she borrowed from history. There was a family called the Fortune Family, which I thought was, you know, that's perfect for a title and the subject matter. Um, and she, some of them are very loosely based just because there was not a lot of information about them. But yes, indeed, there were three Fortune Sisters on the sailing of the Titanic and they did survive. So that's pretty cool, right? I thought it was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go through our first page number, which was nice and early. I do like it when we get one nice and early because sometimes you need that to kind of get into a book, especially like one like this. So this is what it looks like when you come to a page where it's got a sticky note that tells you to find the gift that goes with it. In this case, we have a box that looks like a trunk, very appropriate. Again, they're very good with their packaging. So let's see what it says. All the sisters and Charlie listened attentively as the steward explained how to utilize some of the room's features, including the electric heater and a metal panel of bells and electrical fixtures affixed to one wall that would enable them to summon him, among other things. What's this for? Alice asked, pointing to the green mesh bag hanging on the wall next to her bed. That's for your valuables, miss, the steward replied with a grunt as he lowered the upper Pullman berth at Mabel's request. Those you don't want stored in the safe, in the purser's office, that is. You can tuck your watches and whatnot inside at night so they don't fall to the floor and get lost. He meant if there were rough seas, but Flora had to wonder if they would even feel it on board such a colossal vessel. So they are some of the few Canadians on board, so they don't really have an accent, I, I wouldn't think, but I can't do it necessarily a Canadian accent. So let's say we've got page 24. So we got a suitcase organizer set, which includes three packing cubes and three laundry pouches. So and then they tell you a little bit how to use them. So if you don't know, I love to travel and I swear by packing cubes. I have the Rick Steves ones. Those are my favorite. And I will say I don't think that all packing cubes are created equal. This particular set is one that I have definitely gotten in multiple uh, boxes. It's the green mesh to go along with the um, passage in the book um, but I have gotten this many times in different travel boxes and you guys let's just have a little moment of silence for the passage of there are no more travel boxes out there at least not ones that I get to review here on the channel so we have the nice mesh top it's really nice in terms of being able to see what's inside you can definitely separate things by days I've just found that with this particular set and I've gotten it in pink and orange and we do have laundry pouches that are in more solid uh, situations that actually say laundry pouch, but we do have three different sizes of, of packing cubes that you can see. 
it's just like not the best material like you definitely want it to be lightweight and not add weight to your suitcase or bulk however i found that like the zippers aren't like the best honestly so it's a great item to receive in a subscription box but i already have a lot of packing cubes and i'm very particular with them but i'm certainly happy to pass these on to someone else who might be newer to travel you know if somebody's going on their grand tour or might just be their first big vacation packing cubes are the way to go so that was a good gift but not like a huge wow item for me and they have been doing a really good job on the last few boxes where i have really been wowed uh the next one came on page 140 so this is what the little box looked like and again very much matching the book and the book edges there so it says the last thing Mabel wanted was to be cooped up in a room filled with the sounds of pens scratching. Instead, instead, she went to the lounge to pick out a book from its shelves, something delightfully frivolous, and settled into one of the deck chairs lining the enclosed promenade. A steward helped her to wrap herself in a warm rug and fetched her a cup of hot bouillon, and soon she was immersed in the world of the Paris Opera, where a phantom haunted its halls. Aha! So we can guess, of course, what that book would be. So inside of this box, oh goodness, I just ripped the box. Let me see if I can open it a little bit more delicately as they would on the Titanic. I'd call a steward to help me with my box. All right, so inside we have, it's pretty cute. Um, again, it's not, I actually recently got from Desk Stash a, it looks like a dictionary and it almost has like a fabric, um, cover but it was a safe which I thought was cool in this case it is just a little metal book box but it even has of course if I am the phantom it is because man's hatred has made me so if I am to be saved it is because your love redeems me and of course it is Gaston Leroux so we have a quote on the back we have the phantom of the opera and then it does have like the page edges there but it's a little bit hard to open like it took me a little while I was a little afraid that I was gonna break it um, but it does, it's pretty stiff, but we do have a little book box that you could put candies in or little trinkets, stickers, what have you. And then of course you could actually slide that into your bookshelf and have it be a little secret container, right? So again, it's great in terms of what they created for the book box, but it's not necessarily something that I will personally use. Uh, but I, I love that they, they, they created it for, for us. All right, let's see. Oh, so sometimes they'll have what I call a paper gift or a little enhancer that's not really like a tangible gift that might just be tucked inside. So if there's like a ripped note or a photograph, they might tuck that inside. And occasionally they'll do a QR code because we get a little bit more of a audible or sonic experience. So for example, on chapter 34, page 267, it says... Uh, the orchestra, some in blue uniform coats and some in white jackets, were set up in one corner of the lounge playing ragtime tunes and waltzes, apparently anything with a lively beat. So currently the notes of Oh You Beautiful Doll wafted overhead as stewards circulated serving cocoa, coffee, and brandy. So of course, when you use that QR code, it takes you to Spotify and it plays that ragtime song, Oh You Beautiful Doll, which you, is totally the kind of music that you imagine being played on the Titanic in the, in the drawing rooms or in the social areas, right? Do, 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 you know, that kind of thing. So I won't play it for you because I don't want to get in trouble. Although it's an old enough song that I probably wouldn't get in trouble. All right, let's see. We have one more gift and that came towards the end. Not, it was like a 400 page book, almost 400 pages. There was the author's note that started at like 390 or something. All right, so we have on page 313, Let's see, one more gift. All right, so I thought this was the nicest gift, but it wasn't like the strongest box in terms of the gifts in my personal opinion, just because they've really trained me on the last couple to be expecting more. Um, but they are all decent. There's no real like stinkers in my opinion. Occasionally we'll get something where I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. I can't even re-gift that to someone. Um, but in this case, like they were all decent, but I think this last one was the best. All right, so... They have been, uh, they are in the lifeboats waiting to be rescued by the Carpathia. So it says, let's see. Suddenly a shooting star streaked across the sky and as she waited, another and another. While in Egypt, one of their guides had told her that when you saw a shooting star, it was the departed soul of someone you loved sending you a message in the night sky. 
Some, similarly, their grandmother had always said it was an indication that another soul had made its way home to heaven to be with its savior. With so much suffering occurring nearby, it was impossible not to wonder. She turned to adjust the blankets over her shivering mother. They might have made it onto another boat, she told her. Don't give up hope. Mother didn't respond, and there was little else Alice could do for her, so she turned to the crew members who were debating what to do. So it's that horrible moment. You can tell that the, the writer did a lot of research, and then she does in the end, in her author's note, she says, you know, if I got something wrong, to those of you who are total Titanic heads, I apologize, but please don't write to me because I can't fix any of it now. So this was the reason for us having such a large box this time. We just got this mailer bag. Um, so I do love their packaging. I think it's nice, but honestly, uh, the mailer bags for me are better just because then I don't have to break down boxes. Sometimes it's nice to have the box to re-gift things though. Look at this lovely blanket. So I thought this was really nice with the faux leather and the straps. I'm not going to open it all the way up. They even put a white star line tag on it. I thought that was pretty cute. It says for uh, the stateroom. And then it says it's a travel blanket. It is faux cashmere, which I don't know what that means. But it is 71 inches by 47 inches. So it's got these cute edges. I, the only thing about it is, um, so it just has this nice little harness which I thought was kind of fun because you could use this as a yoga mat um, bag strap as well, or you could put anything into this. So it's nice that this, because I don't really like the look of faux leather, you could use it or you could toss it, but either way, you have this nice soft blanket, which I thought was great and it's not pink. It's like, you know, nice gray, uh, big plaid print. So I thought that was a nice gift. It is pretty soft. I haven't found the tag on it to see what the washing instructions are, but I'm assuming that it's definitely washable so you can use it for your picnics. It's definitely a little bit more on the warm side, but maybe for spring when it's still not too warm outside, this is a great thing to take along with you if you are going out to like an outdoor concert or, you know, like I said, a picnic or even a... Uh, dining outdoors to have a little something to put over your lap so a good thing i always like to have blankets i usually have like mexican blankets and beach towels but a great thing to have in the trunk of your car just for you never know when you might have an impromptu uh, moment or just need to lay something down on a bench or what have you so I did think that was cute and I did appreciate that this was detachable. So for me, this was like a good gift for sure. And it kind of added to the value of the box. This I thought was pretty cute. Packing cubes, like I said, it's nice. You got six pieces. It's just not like the packing cube set that I would personally use because I'm very particular about stuff like that. But let's go ahead and read a little bit of this letter and then thank you if you decide to listen to the rest of it. I truly appreciate it. If not, thanks for watching this video. But let's hear from Annalie Huber. It says, Dear Reader, large families used to be quite common, but in the 80s and 90s, not so much. When I was growing up as the second oldest of six children, I would get teased for being part of such a big family. Other kids would make cracks about my mom being pregnant again, or my family needing a new bus to transport us. But I loved having so many siblings. It was loud and boisterous, and there was always someone to play with. It's glorious to be part of such a large brood who knows and loves you, warts and all. So when I learned about the Fortune family from Winnipeg, Canada, and how six of them had sailed on the ill-fated maiden voyage of the Titanic, I was instantly intrigued. So three sisters, a brother, and the mother and father. First of all, because I'd never heard of them. I couldn't understand how a family including a self-made millionaire father, a stalwart mother, an ingenuous teenage son, and three beautiful 20-something daughters had rarely even been mentioned in the Titanic literature and films I'd read and seen. Coming from a large family myself, I instantly felt a connection with them and a recognition of the family dynamics at play, particularly between siblings. I imagined what it must have been like to experience an event as tumultuous as the Titanic's voyage, its extreme highs and lows, with so many of my loved ones. Ones. There wasn't just one other person to fear for, but five. And they actually had other siblings that were not aboard the ship, too. I also identified with the three sisters, all still at the dawn of adulthood and living lives of both incredible privilege and yet stifling social restrictions. This was the era of the suffragette and of expanding educational opportunities for women. Yet many, especially in the upper classes, still viewed these greater freedoms with suspicion and disapproval. They were perfectly happy to enjoy the latest engineering marvels of the age, to sail across the ocean in extreme luxury on the largest ship ever built, and embark on, a grand, on grand tours of Europe and the Mediterranean, polishing their children's social cachet and expanding 
expanding their horizons, but determined for their offspring to remain within their own polite bubble, following the same narrow, repressive rules they had for generations. I wanted to explore what the sisters' lives were like, their hopes and dreams and fears, and how the Titanic affected it all. I hope you enjoy reading about Flora, Alice, and Mabel, and find inspiration from their courage and heart. I hope I did them all justice. If you'd like to share your thoughts on social media, please use the, has use the hashtag hashtag sisters of fortune wow that was really hard to say so i just thought that was really interesting and like i said she does talk a little bit more about how much is from history not much and where she took liberties and i think she did a really good job and hopefully if there are any descendants of the of the fortune sisters they will read this and think of it as a true tribute to this amazing family so love historical fiction it's just so much fun all right, guys, let me know in the comments below if you've read this, if you're interested, if you think that this is the kind of book subscription that you would like to get involved in. And if you are, definitely use that code NOEL10. And I will see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.